What's up, y'all? On this episode of Young Black America, we discuss Black Lives Matter, Serena Williams, and Chance the Rapper. Welcome to America. 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 The conversation might take us all over the place, but starting. So the people, y'all, they already know. I'm always on this camera. They already know who Vaughn Edmead, Coach Vaughn is, or what have you. But now I'm introducing y'all to my boy, Randall File, right? And y'all are also going to meet Paul. I, I think I introduced y'all to Paul on another video, but not officially, officially. But y'all are getting the official introduction to Randall. Randall, tell some of these people who you are, what you do, so that they can kind of get a feel for, for what you're about, man. Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Randall File. Once again, I want to uh, give praise to, to my brother Vaughn. Uh, Coach Vaughn for having me on today. Um, we feel passionate about a lot of the same things. Yes, sir. Um, empowering uh, youth, uh, particularly black, young black males, um, to safely and productively navigate this world. So um, I've really dedicated my life to education, uh, specifically higher education. I'm currently uh, working at UMD, University of Maryland, um, as an academic advisor and uh, chairing diversity initiatives and so forth. So. Real blessed to be here, excited for the conversation, and uh, look forward to connecting. Absolutely. So, sounds good. So, like y'all heard, he works for University of Maryland. All right, he's doing his thing over there, um, you know, empowering the, the young lives over there, what have you. So, as you can tell, uh, we are two young black men, and I've decided to entitle this particular show um, and, and this particular series that we'll do, uh, Young Black America. All right, Young Black America, because we have been facing some particular challenges, as y'all have seen in the news or what have you, and I just want this to be an outlet um, for y'all to get information that'll encourage you, that'll empower you, and that'll help us to uplift our people, um, and not uplift our people because our people are better than any other people, but uplift our people because, um, again, all lives do matter, right, but our people, the black lives matter, and, and we've seen to have some particular challenges in the black movement, so... Um, um, let me ask you, Randall, you saw the events that went down last week, talking about Alton Sterling, Alton Sterling, um, and um, uh, Philando Castile. What, is, what, were, what were some of the thoughts that went through your mind as you were thinking about, as you saw like the news or what have you, as you saw everything that went down after the night? What, what, what came to mind? To be honest with you, man, uh, the first thought was different days, same stuff. Mm. You know, um, I, I think especially as we usher in this, this new kind of age of social media and so forth, uh, it, it's not uncommon that you see, you know, some really violent um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's almost as if I become desensitized mm -hmm. to it, to, mm -hmm. you know, just the uh, you know, absurdity of it. Um, but I went straight from that to frustration, to mm -hmm. anger, um, and really, actually, after I saw the, the Castile, the Philando Castile mm, shooting mm, the very next mm, morning, mm, that that's when I started to get emotional, mm, man. That, that's when the tears started flowing, mm, and that's when, you know, I mm, didn't have as much control mm, over how I was responding yeah. to, to the incident um, anymore, especially after having a conversation with my father mm. and my brother about it, man. So, yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Yo, yo truthfully, um, what, what happened? I was watching, I saw like the first one, the one with Alton Sterling, Alton Sterling, and somebody had like a side view uh, video with their cam for me, and I saw that, I was like, yo, that looks crazy, you know, but it wasn't until I saw somebody who had the camera view that was like literally almost like right on top, where like something moved or something shifted in my spirit, like, yo, that's crazy, like, like literally, like I felt completely different. I felt horrified, like, yo, how did that just go down? Um, and that's when I was like, yo, you know what? Um, I really want to dedicate significant amount of time um, to really just helping black, our black uh, friends and our black uh, relatives or what have you, helping us elevate, man, because um, this has been hundreds of years now that we've sure. been going through some stuff. Sure. So one of the things I want to ask is, in your opinion, 
how do we how do we like rise from this kind of a stuff like like what like what needs to be done in order for us to be able to have the I don't I don't even know what word I want to use but in order for us to have the status so to speak or the 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 lifestyle or the um the peace maybe that we see other people seem to be able to um, enjoy in this country, but it feels like we can't enjoy that same thing. What do you think has to happen in order for that to change? That's the man. That's a, that's a loaded question, mm -hmm. and, and you know, let me start off by saying, by no means am I the expert. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, really, to this point, nobody is the expert because mm -hmm. we're still mm -hmm. seeing the same issues persist, mm -hmm. you know, for centuries, for decades, mm -hmm. so forth. But but I would say it definitely. Uh, Kind of, it, it, it has to be a collective movement, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I think um, there are definitely things within individuals, within our individual community, the black community, that we can uh, identify as persistent issues, mm -hmm. as things that we can control, mm -hmm. things we can uh, kind of empower each other, educate each other about to uh, take steps toward overcoming. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think what we're up against is, you know, like that biblical scripture, you know, principality. Mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. We're not mm -hmm. wrestling against flesh mm -hmm. and blood, right? Mm -hmm. Right. If, if mm -hmm. it was, then it would be a lot mm -hmm. easier to yeah. overcome, right? So yeah. these things are really above, uh, you know, humanity, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think, I think it has to also we have have to also acknowledge that, you know, this country was founded on, <laughs> on principles, ideologies, man, that. Uh, mm -hmm. Had us mm -hmm. and perceived us as less well, than. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Let me let me, let me <laughs> ask you. Let me ask you real quick because some would say now uh, we we now this show is for whether you're Christian, whether you're Muslim, whether you're. You, right. We don't even right. care what you are, right? We we just want to take the chance to pour into y'all, right? But we mm -hmm. both happen to be Christian, mm -hmm. all right. So I want to ask you, um, when you ask a lot of people. Because you were just about to say that this, this what this country was founded on, right? And you and, and you were about to go one direction. But if you ask a lot of people, a lot of people uh -huh. are like, "Yo, this country is founded on Christi on Christian principles." Or mm -hmm. if you want to just maybe uh, color it a little different, at religious principles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? right? So mm -hmm. how do you how do you um, reconcile what you because you were gonna say this country was founded on what slavery, uh, treating a group of people as less than not just one group of people but a number of group of people oh, actually oh, right sure, yeah. so how do you reconcile when people say that this country was built on like um, um, certain principles that we consider to be uh, I don't even want to just say religious but good principles but then the challenge that we've experienced as black people when we know that it, it, it didn't seem like there was good principles for us sure yeah, so I mean that, that that's that's another good point, mm -hmm. man. I, I feel like um, just because you call it Christianity, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, just call because you call it ethical, mm -hmm. you know, moral doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it is, mm -hmm. right? So I think what, what what we saw, especially in the foundation of this uh, development of this country, is that um, they skewed, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. and mixed and matched, mm -hmm. uh, you know, biblical principle in a way that would kind of help them reconcile their mm. cognitive dissonance, mm. right? So they, they had a certain perception of us. Cognitive dissonance. Right. right? So, That's a word for y'all. <laughs> yeah, so so they, they were thinking, you know, they, they <laughs> were going through the motions uh -huh. of, you know, formulating this country and so forth. There was a lot of guilt associated mm -hmm. with that because mm -hmm. lives were being lost, mm -hmm. people were being exploited and so forth. What other way and what better way to justify your actions than to take, you know, biblical mm -hmm. scripture mm -hmm. and, and doctrine mm -hmm. to justify why you're doing that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That biblically it's saying that these people deserve this, mm -hmm. right? That these people are an abomination, mm -hmm. that these people um, are inherently evil, mm -hmm. okay? So we're, you, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, essentially fulfilling biblical mm -hmm. prophecy um, by, you know, disenfranchising these mm -hmm. people and keeping them mm -hmm. down where they, you know, are meant to be. So I, I feel like a lot of that is just the skewing of what the word is actually teaching us about um, how to interact with one another, how to love one another, how to uh, you know be Christ-like toward one another. So um, yeah, that that would essentially be my answer to that. Okay. Now let me ask you: Do you because we got a lot of young people out there who are angry or what have you, right? Do you feel that there's some things on the part of what? What are some things? Here's one of the challenges that I have, right? Mm. 
one of the challenges that I have is that I don't expect things to change from the oppressor, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And when I say the oppressor, I'm not blanketing everybody you know, who's not black as the oppressor or who might be of Caucasian descent as the uh, oppressor, but you know, just the powers that be the oppressor. Mm -hmm. So I'm not expecting that the oppressor or the oppression would change on the part of the oppressor unless something um, impacts the oppressor in such a way that makes the oppressor. So if, for instance, right, oh, you got a lot of people who are doing things to uh, uh, affect the finances in the country right now, right? Yeah, but uh, to go deeper, I'm not one that thinks that I'm going to be able to rely on anybody else to change anything, right? Sure. I think that the change is going to have to be within the African-American community, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That being said, how do I want to phrase this? Mm -hmm. That being said, in your opinion, what do we have to do as it, it, within our own culture? Like, mm -hmm. like what needs to be, what, what issues do we need to address amongst ourselves sure. if we feel like we're going to get the results that we want to get? I mean, it, so, so you know, we're kind of fighting an uphill battle, here, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you talk about what really, what really allows you to have a strong sense of self, mm -hmm. uh, self-efficacy, mm -hmm. and so forth, it is actually um, knowing that you came from something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that you were molded in, in, in someone's image, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. That that you are of worth, of value, and you know, unfortunately, as a people, man, I. I I, I will still throw this in there and then kind of get more mm -hmm. of your question that, you know, we were sy systemically, mm -hmm. okay, believed and educated to not believe that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so essentially we have to unlearn mm -hmm. that to learn that we are of value and that mm -hmm. we actually do have and contain a lot of power within mm -hmm. ourselves and within our community. So I think once we're able to really come to grips with that um, through re-education, mm -hmm. um, you know, through kind of engaging and embracing each other like this, mm -hmm. um, you know, reaching back, paying. All right, so I'm gonna record it just for the sake of recording. But like, this is the type of stuff where you don't realize it when you're speaking, it, it, it's sometimes hard to just speak. You don't, all right, so me, I, I think in broad strokes, right? I think I'm always looking big yeah, picture. Yeah, so yeah. I'll say something to somebody uh -huh. and it'll just be like, yo, I've given them the big picture. They should be able to see it all. Uh -huh. And I don't realize that, yo, I know what the big picture looks like, but they don't know what the big picture looks sure. like. So yeah. so I have to actually go in depth and go deeper, uh -huh. which is what you're supposed to do, right? Uh -huh. But sometimes I forget. But now when you have somebody <laughs> on a court from you, like, and, and by all means, you can say whatever, right. right? But you can now be like, yo, Vaughn, I need you to make this a bit more clear for me. And uh -huh. or I hit you, like I already had some stuff in mind, like, yo, all right, boom. Randall, I need you to take this a little bit deeper for me. So uh -huh. you might have said, there was actually something that you had said. I forgot what it was. Um, oh, you were like, uh, Matthew, we can segue right back into that. You see how we did that just now? Uh -huh. So so you were like, um, um, what did you say? We we were um, born to be kings, or right? Or, or we really come from mm -hmm. um, 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 a, another continent where we were kings or what have mm -hmm. you, we were royalty, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and for those who might be religious, you know, a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation now, right? Mm -hmm. So when you said that we need to go back to that mindset, so that my question would be, what what would that look like? What? So we see what's happening now, mm -hmm. compare what's happening now to what, it should, what, what you would want it to look like when we finally get to the point where we realize and understand you know, we are royal priesthood, we are chosen generation, right. uh, we come from royalty, uh, you know? Absolutely. Um, you, so, so one way to answer that question, right, again, coming from the higher education mm -hmm. background, um, you know, I think seeing, you know, some of our, our new students, particularly the incoming freshmen, mm -hmm. um, really more knowledgeable about and prepared for college, mm -hmm. for example. You know what I'm saying? And I think some of that has to do with social capital, mm -hmm. right? Um, being able to say, well, I got a cousin, I got an uncle, I got mm -hmm. a father, I got a brother, I got a mentor mm -hmm. who was there to kind of take me and coach me, pay it forward and walk me through this mm -hmm. process. I know where my opportunities are mm -hmm. financial aid wise. I know where my opportunities are a piece, mm -hmm. you know, exam mm -hmm. wise. Um, I know how to, you know, put a resume together mm -hmm. before I even get in, in mm -hmm. the college. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's Yo, how, and I, that's something that's crazy because I've been, like, I've been look, looking and understanding resumes a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, when I look at <laughs> what I understand about resumes uh, versus 
the other, uh -huh. you know, other, um, uh -huh. you know, cultures or, or uh, other people from other backgrounds um, and races, what they understand about resumes, like com two complete different worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Like what resumes that I've seen and that I've seen of my friends tend to be somewhat general or what have you. Um, but when I look at the resumes that are coming from uh, folks from, let's say, white communities or other communities, and I'm like, yo, right. this is some real specific right. stuff. It's right. real right. rich. I'm like, right. yo, this is a whole other level. Yeah. But this, it's just stuff that we just aren't privy to. We just don't learn That's it. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, so, some of that does have to do with class, man. I, I don't necessarily want to put it on all black oh, yeah, people yeah, 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 and so forth. But, but I mean, that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. a skill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that, you know, maybe other cultures don't realize is a skill because it's what they've always right, been right, taught. True. Right, they, true. They've been, from the day they was born, they, they've been prepping or they, mm -hmm. their parents have been prepping them to take over the business. Mm -hmm. Right, we we been prepped to get a job. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of ingrained in the upbringing. I think we ought to be able to do the same, that mm -hmm. we are prepping you to take charge, uh, to be able to articulate your, your value mm -hmm. added um, in, in any circumstance, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's just one example of what it would look like to really adopt that sort of mindset. Um, yeah. yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah. To switch, uh, switch, switch it up a bit, man. Sports. You've been following what's going on in sports. All right. So what 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 stands out to me the NBA because I want to I want the people to also kind of get like a you know the whole picture of who we are what have you not just serious all the time but like mm -hmm. we enjoy stuff too but maybe there are things that we can even learn from going into some of the other topics that we do mm -hmm. um, our people tend to be heavily involved and um, attentive to sports mm -hmm. anything that stands out to you in the sports world right now yeah 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 um, I mean so, somebody and I, I want to stay on more the light side mm -hmm. but. Um, this is free agency, man, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, mm -hmm. In the NBA, you don't. Right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, NBA I, looks I do, crazy right now. <laughs> and I do want to throw out their props to Serena Williams. Oh, the Williams yeah. Sisters for, for, Absolutely. for winning the, the doubles. Um, Serena Williams, Absolutely. Williams getting a 22nd Grand Slam. Absolutely. I think she, uh, uh, you know, doing major things. And there. I think she tied now. It's tied for the most women's Grand Slams or whatever. Second most. Oh, second most second time most, yeah. And then um, how many more does she need to tie? Two. Two? Two. And then, so three, she needs to take it all by herself. Right, so right, right, hopefully right. She'll, she'll get it. I think she will. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's amazing to see. So so I'm glad that you brought that up, right? Because we don't just want to talk about, like, we have so many people that are into entertainment in our mm -hmm. cult cultures or right, in the black culture and the black community already, right? And that's all we get from it is just entertainment. Mm -hmm. But I want to also see what principles can we get. Mm -hmm. So... I want y'all to pay attention when you think about Serena. Look at the longevity that she's had, right? Imagine how much focus that's ta it takes to have that. Imagine the amount of consistency mm -hmm. it takes to have that. We've been I've been hearing about Serena since I'm I'm 32 <laughs> years old now, right? I've been hearing about Serena and Venus from the time I was in grade school still. I was in like high school still, you know what I'm saying? And they've had such longevity, which is unheard of. You look at other people who have just retired. Tim Duncan, shout out to sure. Tim Duncan. Hey. Shout out to Kobe Bryant who's decided to mm -hmm. retire, right? So so I think sometimes we get caught up in only looking at the sports, mm -hmm. but we're missing out on the fact that like what does that mean for us in our own spheres? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for us on our for those of us who have jobs, mm -hmm. for those of us who um, are, are involved maybe you're an entrepreneur right um, maybe you're involved in something else but what should what does that mean like what to have that type of longevity what does that take have we have you ever thought about that mm -hmm. right to, to all y'all out there have you thought about what it takes to have that type of longevity in your area mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah that's that's deep man and I, I think you know I, I'm a paraphrase of what actually the boy E.T. said mm -hmm. I mean it's, it's really about thirsting after that hunt mm -hmm. you know so it's not just about being a beast, mm -hmm. but it's actually putting in the work behind the scenes when nobody's looking. Mm -hmm. you know, what, how are you, mm -hmm. how are you productive and mm -hmm. spending your off time? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and committing to that day in day out. He was even talking about how Kobe, after mm -hmm. a, a regular season loss, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the away stadium, he was shooting jump shots mm -hmm. repeatedly from the spot where he he missed the game winning or game tying mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's the type of thing that that creates longevity. Mm -hmm. So. And this just came to mind. I want to make sure that they get this. Yo, for real. Don't worry. Don't try to always go down the same path 
that everybody else is going down, right? Because who knows what opportunities you might be missing out on in a place that's a little bit less crowded. And the reason why I say that is because we look at Venus, we look at Serena, right? Now we know that in the black community, the black community is not necessarily heavily involved in um, tennis. You see what I'm saying? With, it, 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 truth be told, we're not heavily, but shout out to Ruben. I know Ruben might watch this. Well, I don't know if Ruben watches anything that I do, but Ruben, if you watch this, shout out to you because that's one of my boys that actually plays tennis uh -huh. back home, Unidale, New, uh, New York. Shout out to Unidale, New York. As a matter of fact, I, oh, I took, yeah, yeah. I took lessons from back Westbury, in the day. New York. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, yeah. So I took, took lessons. lessons. <laughs> yeah, Paul's from Baltimore. So shout out to Long Island real quick because even though we in the DMV, the DC area, shout out to Long Island, which is where me, him, and Paul are all from, man, New York. Um, but so we, we often, to, everybody wants to go ahead and be a, a basketball player. Everybody wants to go ahead and be a football player. Everybody wants to be a rapper. Not, and I think that when you look at Venus and Serena, yo, they went into an area that black people don't usually go into. And because it's not a crowded space, they were able to make a significant name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas we might not have heard of them if, about them if they had gone into another space. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's key. I think that's valuable for, for um, some of those that might be listening in because yo, sometimes you're trying to go to a place that's very crowded and it might be better for you, it might be more lucrative for you to go to an area, to a pond that's smaller where you can be the big fish as opposed to going to the pond that's real big and got a whole bunch of big fish in there already and you can't really stand out, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's deep and I mean, that, that could be that could be a scary thing to do. Oh, it sure can. You know what I'm sure saying? Can. I mean, you, you talk about mentorship and the importance of that, role models mm -hmm. and so forth. If, if you don't have nobody in, in that particular field, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you feel like you out there by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no guidance. You, you got to basically amass all this knowledge and wisdom mm -hmm. about the mm -hmm. field y yourself, mm -hmm. right? And, and obviously what, what we see a lot of times, too, is that the experiences and the challenges and the obstacles that you know, one might be facing based on, mm -hmm. you know, whatever identity, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, whether, whether it be race, ethnicity, mm -hmm. social, socioeconomic mm -hmm. status and so forth, mm -hmm. man, it's, it's just different. There's certain things that you didn't, that other people didn't have to accommodate for uh, that you do, right? Right. right. So, but yeah, props to those who, who really, you know, grind through it. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Other question I want to ask you. Um, anybody that stands out to you from let's say the hip-hop community right now mm -hmm. right especially as it pertains to um, um, you know the black community mm -hmm. um, and elevating it anybody right. stands out to you right now uh, uh, well I, I saw a video uh, what was it maybe three days ago man with, with Snoop okay all right in the game out in the community mm -hmm. they actually uh, you know uh, did the peaceful protest mm -hmm. Um, actually for the means of engaging in dialogue with the LAPD. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. So, I mean, to, to see that, man, awesome. to see, you know, people from, from all different backgrounds, awesome. like different gangs, mm -hmm. you know, come together, um, different races. Yeah. He was calling out Mexicans, white, every, everybody mm -hmm. who wanted to be a part of uh, pushing this agenda forward in a peaceful way, uh, in a constructive mm -hmm. way. I mean that that was powerful, man. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you, I, I got a little emotional seeing that too because I mean one, one of the main things you, you hear is people calling out athletes, mm -hmm. rappers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. saying where you at, yep. right? And for somebody who's been in the game, it's like, yeah. It's, and and, that, and, and my, the reason why that stands out to me is because I'm looking at where Snoop has come from. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering when Snoop was out there talking. With so much drama in the LBC, <laughs> it's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double G, right? I'm looking at those days where you would have thought he would have never been involved yeah. in something like that, right? Yeah. Another person, um, um, Ice T, even. Yeah. I look at Ice T now playing as a cop in movie, or, or Ice Cube playing as a cop sometimes right, in movie, right, right, and it's right, like, right, right, yo, right. these guys were, you back in the day, they thought that these guys were against police or what have you but right, again right, it was right. just really just the circumstances that they were in where it's like never did they feel like there was any love coming from mm -hmm. the police and the thing they felt right, like they were right, right. Yeah. yeah the camera keeps shutting off but I'm just glad again that um that we've been able to see um, some of the prominent, because these are the cats that the kids, like the kids don't really look up to me and you like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they, they, they might <laughs> yeah, hear not, us not out, yet, right? Yet, and it'd yeah. be temporary, but they're going to hear a lot more from a Snoop. I'm always glad to see uh, J. Cole, who, oh, yeah. um, who I had to, pre pre he probably don't even remember me, but um, when we used to work at the same call center together out there in Long Island, when he was at St. John's University, and we would talk sometimes back and forth. 
um, him about rapping, me about playing drums, uh -huh. um, you know, but I, I hear in his music what he's trying to do for the right, community. Right. Kendrick. Um, Kendrick Lamar, of yeah. course, man. Even, even, and shout out to Chance the Rapper. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to a, a bit of his album today, and I mean, not necessarily that I, in, I would have people listening to everything that's in there, mm -hmm. but just the, I hear something different that it sounds like he's trying to do. He's trying to bring something new to the table, mm -hmm. just like J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar. That's not mm -hmm. all about mm -hmm. guns, drugs, violence, right, and all this right, kind of stuff. Right, right. But 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 something that's uplifting mm -hmm. to the community, man. And uh, going back to the Serena thing, his album is real unique, mm -hmm. right? Very unique. Something like it doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before, man. Uh, so, um, yeah, kudos to them, man. So um, we'll end it like this in in the spirit of. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, right? In the spirit of Gary Vaynerchuk, what's one question that you would maybe ask our audience that we can engage them on in the comments section or what have you? We can talk back and forth and dialogue with them um, that they can, that, that you would want them to answer, whether it be about them personally, uh, something for fun, or whether it be on a serious matter. Sure. Um, I, w I would say this. Uh, what does your authenticity look like? All right, so what, That's good. within whatever That's sphere, good. Um, what is your authentic and most authentic book? I mean, you either authentic or you're not. <laughs> so what does your authentic self look like, um, whether it be in this Black Lives Matter movement, whether it be professionally, whether it be um, in whatever ministry you might have, calling, purpose, uh, what, what does that look like and, and, and where does one start to understand that? All right, yeah, yeah, authenticity. What What is your true self, man? And in my speeches, I start with that, man. I ain't even gonna take up that much time, but we can talk about that one day as an actual topic, like getting down to the truth of who are you? What the real thing, right? So anyway, here's Coach Vaughn, Randall File. Paul wasn't here, but Paul will be here probably on the next one, man. Averages, failure, black lives do matter, all right? Y'all keep on rising to the top. We're gonna keep on doing what we can to pour into you. I hope that this was a blessing for you. All right, peace. And I die for America. All right, y'all, what's up? It's Coach Vaughn, Randall File. On this episode of Young Black America, we discuss... Oh, I can't even... <laughs> <laughs> Black Lives Matter, Serena Williams. Yeah, I, I, man, I wish I had one. Black Lives Matter, Serena Williams, and Chance the Rap. Okay, uh, we discuss Black Lives Matter, Serena Williams, and Chance the Rap. <laughs> oh man, there we go. Here we go. I hope we got this. better time. than what I can do, I'll tell you that. But. What's up, y'all? On this episode of. Man. <laughs> Bugging. What's up, y'all? On this episode of Young Black America, we discuss Black Lives Matter, Serena Williams, and Chance the Rapper. See you soon. I'll probably cut that see you soon part out. <laughs> you could. Yeah, there we go. We got I don't it. know nothing about this. Mm -hmm.